Mobile operators are keen to get their 5G networks rolled out as quickly and as efficiently as possible, but they still have numerous challenges to overcome and these days many more sustainability goals to hit. Uh, to talk about how the operators can overcome their challenges, I'm here with Pedro Torres, CTO Europe Outdoor Wireless Networks at Comscope. So uh, Pedro, thanks so much for joining us today. Now, today's wireless operators are still faced with the difficult task of integrating new 5G capabilities into existing 4G sites, which inevitably presents a host of challenges as sites become a lot more complex and crowded. How are operators dealing with this challenge and how can Comscope help? Yeah, the deployment of 5G networks has been a significant civil engineering challenge for operators, especially in urban areas where massive MIMO radios are the preferred solution. And there are always side limitations, limitations in terms of the space, in terms of wind load, aesthetics, and so on. And until now, operators have had very limited options to accommodate those massive MIMO radios, other than um, deploying more uh, side infrastructure, adding more poles, more mass, or reinforcing the existing ones. And this is all very uh, costly, it's time consuming and um, not always possible. So when this is not possible, they are forced to share the same pole for the active and the passive antenna with the active stacked on top of the passive, passive one. And this is um, typically at the expense of reducing the um, length of the a passive antenna, which means that you have less coverage and an impact on uh, user experience. So to address these challenges, Comscope has developed a passive antenna platform called Mosaic. And Mo Mosaic has some unique RF properties that allow the operators deploy the massive MIMO radio behind the Mosaic unit. And the RF signals from the massive MIMO radio will pass through the Mosaic antenna transparently with minimum impact. So you can see right away the benefits of this configuration. You can simplify your 5G rollouts. You can standardize your uh, site configurations. You can decouple the evolution of the passive and the active antennas, and you can uh, enable future um, introductions of uh, massive MIMO open run radios uh, if you, you decide to do so. So overall, we have received very good feedback from our customers on the Mosaic platform and just looking forward to seeing the antennas uh, on sites in, uh, worldwide. Now, the industry has completed the first wave of 5G rollouts, uh, but what comes next? Uh, what are some of the technologies and capabilities needed during the latter half of 5G rollouts? Yeah, if you look at what has happened in the first two to three years of uh, 5G rollouts, uh, what you see is that operators have deployed 3.5 gigahertz uh, in urban areas with uh, lots of traffic. And this is usually done with uh, massive MIMO radios, as I said earlier. Uh, then some operators decided to go the DSS route to have a quick 5G footprint using usually the mid bands, the um, 2100 and so on. Um, and we have also seen operators deploying 700 for the nationwide uh, 5G coverage and also for deep indoor uh, coverage. So that's what we have seen so far. Going forward, what we expect is operators um, expanding the coverage of the 3.5 band into smaller cities or suburban areas. And for that purpose, we think that the ATR will be um, a very compelling solution in terms of cost and power consumption. So with the ATR, we can save between 30 to 50% of power consumption compared to a massive MIMO in sites with little to moderate traffic. Um, so that's one thing we expect to see, ATAD are more visible in the site designs uh, into these uh, areas with less traffic, let's say. Then we also expect to see an evolution of the FTD meat bands. And the reason for that is because we don't expect um, significant amount of a spectrum below three gigahertz, new spectrum coming along in the next few years. So we'll have to evolve the existing FTD bands to um, uh, capture the traffic growth that we expect in, uh, in 5G networks. 
So we need better coverage and better capacity in those mid bands. And there are a number of solutions you can use. One way is to sectorize as we have traditionally done. Another way is to go massive MIMO, uh, FDD, but this is usually a costly exercise uh, in terms of power, in terms of space. So it's very problematic to deploy these uh, big radios in existing sites. So we think that the sweet spot and the mainstream solution will be ATDR FDD, which provides the right balance between complexity and, uh, and cost and, and return on the investment. Um, so for that, you need uh, an ecosystem of radios, antennas and cluster connectors. Now, fortunately, we already have that in our portfolio. So we do have FDD ATDR antennas in our portfolio, as well as the cluster connectors that go along with them. Okay, now you mentioned uh, power consumption there a few times and operators have set the goal to deploy and operate more sustainable networks. Uh, what is the industry, the, the telecom ecosystem, doing to help them plan, build and run greener networks? As you say, sustainability is at the top of the agenda now in the mobile industry. So in each and every conversation that I have with customers, uh, the sustainability topic is, is brought up. And there are a number of, of things we can do to help in that sustainability agenda. Number one thing is to reduce power consumption. And, um, you know, Comscope does not manufacture active radios for the macro networks. So, uh, so we don't have the possibility to act on those uh, radio re uh, remote units power consumption but we can shape how they work so there are a number of things we can do number one is as i said earlier to go for ATR instead of massive MIMO where it makes sense so i'm not saying that you should go everywhere uh, ATR, but in those sites where there is little to moderate traffic where you have not used all your lt bands today it makes sense to go ATR especially if you pair it with uh, 700 megahertz, you have a very compelling solution. And you can save, as I say, 30 to 50% compared to 32, uh, 60, 40, 64 R. Um, the other thing you can do is to improve the efficiencies of uh, the antennas. When I say efficiencies, I mean several types of efficiencies. Uh, one uh, type of efficiency is what we call the radiation efficiency, which means the insertion loss, the internal losses that you have in the antenna. So if you are able to improve, let's say, reduce the losses inside the antenna, then you can use that extra gain to power down the radios and you will have less power consumption. Where that is more visible, uh, it will be in sites with a lot of load. So if you have a lot of load on a site, by powering down the radios, you can get a 10, 15% power consumption reduction. If we're talking about sites that have very little traffic, then the savings will be uh, much, much less. And then the other types of antenna efficiency that we can uh, work on and improve are related to the patterns. So if you have a better pattern, so meaning that you uh, confine the energy to the sector area and minimize the energy that goes elsewhere, elsewhere that means that you will have a better SINR in your network. You will be using higher modulation and coding schemes. And to deliver the same amount of traffic, you will be using less PRBs in your radio. And as we all know, if you use less PRBs in your radios, that means you consume less power. So every dB that you improve in SINR means 10% less power consumption in, in those radios. Other things we can do um, are, for example, to increase the lifespan of our antennas. So going for modular designs like the mosaic concept, where you decouple the active and the passive evolution, that's one way to preserve the lifespan of, of antennas on sites. Another way is to go for antennas that are reconfigurable or adaptable to different network scenarios. So you can go from one sector to multiple sectors, or you can uh, migrate from 40 to 80 ATR. And of course, the final one would be to reuse antennas that are perfectly functional, uh, but no longer valid for a particular use case in a network scenario. Those antennas can be used elsewhere in another network. So that would be that would be the third way to increase the lifespan of antennas on sites. And then finally, uh, just to be responsible for uh, sorry about the materials that we use. So responsible on how we use aluminum, for instance, in our antennas, try to reduce the amount of aluminum 
that we have in our reflectors as much as possible and try to use recyclable materials like the recyclable radomes that we're planning to introduce and be as efficient as possible in how we transport those antennas so that we reduce the overall CO2 footprint uh, from transportation. So there are a number of things we can do in, in our uh, industry, Ray, um, to help on this sustainability agenda. So lots of great options there, uh, Pedro, lots of opportunities. And it's clear that the operators want to build and run greener and smarter networks. Well, thanks very much for joining us today, Pedro. Great to talk to you. Uh, and thanks for your insights on 5G and what Comscope is doing. Thanks very much.